Hello everyone, I am Ritesh from Rev.io and today I will show you how you can create a fast Android app and get its APK file. I expect you are completely new to Android development and you just install Android Studio. We will create this very simple Android app which will display your name. So let's get started. After a clean installation, this is the first screen you will see. Here you can choose a template to start with. You can select no activity to start from scratch. Activity in simple words is a page in your app. The empty activity which is selected by default is an empty page, while no activity means no page at all. Now there are two ways to design an app. One is using XML and another is using Jetpack Compose which is Kotlin. XML is the traditional way where you separately code the design. As you have to create the design separately, it's very inefficient, but with Jetpack Compose you design and type the business logic in the same place. Jetpack Compose is the future, but I recommend to start with XML and later move on to Jetpack Compose. The empty activity which is the empty page made with Jetpack Compose, but the one below empty views activity is the empty page made with XML. The other templates you see are rarely used and you can add those pages even if you start with no activity. We will select empty views activity, click next. This is the name of your app. We can set whatever you want. The second phase is asked about the package name which works like ID of your app. The name start with the TLD of your website, the second level domain and then the name of your app. Our website is Repo.io, so the package name will be io.repcore.app's name. Don't worry, this is not a rule, just a standard. You can use any words between the dots. The third field is the location where your application source code will be stored. By default, Android Studio creates the Android Studio project folder in the user directory. Always create a separate folder for each app source code. We will go with the default location. In the fourth field, you can select the language you want, either Kotlin or Java. Kotlin is the official language. We will go with Kotlin. In the fifth field, Android Studio asks for minimum SDK. SDK in simple words is various versions of Android. There is SDK for every version of Android like you can see in the start. If you build a app for higher SDK, those Android users with lower SDK won't be able to install your app. You should choose the version of your app based on your needs. As you are building a very simple app, we will leave it as a default. Now in the last field, here you set the language for your configuration file. It's simply for you to write what libraries and tools you will be using. Now traditionally, we use a language called Groovy to write these files, but you can start with Kotlin to using Kotlin DSL. I recommend to use Groovy at first and let us switch to Kotlin DSL, as most documentation still don't show Kotlin. So we will select Groovy. Our app is now loading, as you can see below. Now below we see an error message. Don't get scared if you see this message. It means that Android itself has some errors. You can see the error by clicking on it and click report and clear all to clear the message. If you are first time opening Android Studio, it will take a while to load. On the left side you can see the files. You can open or close the project panel by clicking on the project button. This is the file where we write the logic, like what will happen when we click a button. When we use XML to create the app design, we write XML in a separate file in this folder. Let me now show you this app folder in File Explorer. Although this folder is named as app, the content you see in Android Studio present a bit different inside. Inside the Java folder, there are a few more folders according to your package name. Like in my case, io.repcode.myapplication. The rest folder follows the images, icons you will be using in your app and theme of your app. And you also see this manifest.xml. This is where you declare important details of your app like your app's name, its icon and all. Now let's check out the XML file for our main activity. This is where you design your app. Keep in mind, when you are using Jetpack Compose, you will be using Kotlin as your language and will be designing your app in main activity. And your studio might seem complicated now. Let's reduce the complexity by clicking on this button in the bottom left corner to hide the side button panels. In the top right, you can see three panels. We are in Design panel. We can use this handy drag and drop editor to design our app. But let's see what goes behind the scenes. Click on the split button to see both the design and the code for the design. Now let's check out the code. I will try to explain the code in very simple words. So that you can understand even if you don't know coding. As you know, designs are created with XML. XML is a really easy language, it's similar to HTML. But unlike HTML, the tags are set by the coder. Like in Android's case, we use these two lines of code to source the tags in every XML page. Android Studio gives this Hello World text design created based on the template we choose initially. But when we remove this code, the code left is a container element. Elements are blocks of code which creates a design. Container elements helps position the elements present inside. For now, we don't need to go deep into that. You start your XML page by defining that it's a XML with this line. In each element, you have an open tag and a close tag. The tags start with an open bracket and close with a forward slash and a close bracket. Some elements are used as a container to hold elements, which help position them as a row or a column and other various ways. 
In such containers, open tags are written between two angle brackets and the closed tags are written between two angle brackets with a forward slash. Like here, you add more elements between the open and the closed tag. Elements which doesn't hold other elements don't have a separate open and closed tag, like in text views, buttons, image views, and so on. Now we want to write some tag. You write the tag with the word text view. Every element like images, buttons, and tags are called views in Android. Now to change the properties of these views, we use additional code written in the opening tag called attributes. The two attributes layout width and layout height are mandatory to add in every element. Let's capitalize the text and change the location to center using a few attributes. To write an attribute, we write the attribute name equal to and then the value of that attribute. We use text all caps attribute with boolean value true to capitalize the text and to position the elements. We use gravity attribute with the value center to center the position of the element. All the attributes are mentioned in the documentation. Link to that in the description of this video. Now we don't need to change the code we already have in main activity. But let me explain what the code does. The first line tells Android that this file is a part of this package which we had set earlier. Then there are some import statements which you can see by clicking on it. This shows already written code which we simply import into our file so that we don't have to write the code ourselves. The sixth line starts a class called main activity. You don't need to create dmp to classes now. It's simply a block of code in Kotlin. This block of code are enclosed by two curly braces. This is a start of a function named onCreate. The code inside this function is also enclosed by two curly braces. OnCreate function runs whenever the app starts. When you click on the app icon on your home screen, the Android OS calls the code from this onCreate function. Whatever you write here will be executed as soon as the app starts. This line calls some additional code which every app should run as soon as the app starts. Then the third line says the design which you wrote in activityman.xml to be the design of our app. All these lines are written in onCreate function. So these lines will run as soon as the app get created in our Android phone's name. Now our simple app is ready. Let's launch it in our phone. We can use NSTudio's virtual phone. But it will require a huge amount of RAM and still won't run fast. Physical device will run much faster and smoother than a virtual device. So we will use our phone to run the app. But to use Android phone for the test, we have to turn on developer options and enable USB debugging. Let me show you how to do it. Open settings, then go to about phone, tap on wheel number 7 times to enable developer options. Now go to system, then developer options, scroll down, and enable USB debugging. Connect an Android phone with a USB cable. Ok, now we will see your phone in the studio. Select your device, it might take a while to show. Now open this running devices panel to see your devices screen in your computer. If you don't see, just enable device mirroring like this. Now click on this play button, and the studio will build the APK and run on your device. There we see our app now successfully. Now let's find our APK. For this, just open the build tab and click on the build APKs. Now after the build completion, you will see this notification. Click on this locate button to see the APK file. This is named on debug APK because we use this app for testing purposes. We will sign bundles to publish in Play Store. If you are facing any issues and go stop firmware, feel free to comment down below. I will see you in play. Thanks for watching the video.